The human body is a marvel of biology and connection. Among its most complex, misunderstood, and medically fascinating processes is the female orgasm. Today, we'll look beyond myths and social stigma to explain, with science, imaging, and peer-reviewed. Research what actually happens in the body and the brain during orgasm and why it matters for health. This is an evidence-based medical explainer intended for adults and health professionals alike. Let's begin. First, definitions and scope. Orgasm refers to the climactic phase of sexual response, marked by rhythmic muscular contractions and intense subjective pleasure. While commonly associated with genital stimulation, orgasm is fundamentally a whole-body event involving nerves, muscles, blood flow, hormones, and brain circuits. In this video, we'll discuss anatomy, neurophysiology, the stages of response, measurable bodily changes, health implications, and common reasons some women don't reach orgasm. To understand the female orgasm, start with anatomy. The clitoris is the primary sensory organ, externally visible as the glands, and internally extending into the body through the clitoral shaft, crura, legs, bulbs, and a network of erectile tissue that wraps around the vaginal vestibule. The clitoris contains thousands of specialized nerve endings responsible for fine, touch, and sexual sensation. Recent anatomical studies emphasize the internal structures, not just the visible glands and explaining why stimulation of the deeper tissues can produce strong sensations. Important facts. The visible glands is only a small portion of the clitoral complex. Internal clitoral structures are closely associated with the vaginal canal and urethra. Other erogenous zones, the vaginal walls, cervix, labia, perineum, and nipples, can contribute to orgasmic sensations via distinct nerve pathways. Importantly, women's experiences vary. Some report clitoral dominant orgasms, others vaginal sensations or combined patterns. Scientific literature shows substantial individual variability. Anatomy and neural wiring are not identical across people. Orgasm begins in the brain. Sensory signals from the genitals travel through peripheral, nerves to the spinal cord and ascend to brain, regions involved in sensation, emotion, and reward. Functional imaging studies show activation in the somatosensory cortex, touch, the limbic system, emotion, and subcortical reward circuits, particularly the nucleus accumbens, hypothalamus, and brainstem structures. During orgasm, some cortical areas associated with self-monitoring and anxiety show decreased activity, which may explain the feeling of letting go. At the same time, reward and autonomic centers show intense, short-lived activation. This neurophysiological mix produces powerful subjective sensations and immediate downstream bodily effects. A classic framework for sexual response is the Masters and Johnson model. Excitement, plateau, orgasm, and resolution. While modern models add nuance, such as the importance of desire, intimacy, and context. These four stages remain useful for describing physiological change. Not every person follows this pattern exactly. Orgasm intensity and duration vary. Some people experience multiple orgasms without a lengthy refractory period, while others need longer recovery. Hormonal status, age, medications, and emotional context all contribute. Orgasm triggers systemic changes. Oxytocin levels spike in many people, promoting bonding. Endorphin levels rise, contributing to analgesia and mood elevation. Autonomic nervous system activity increases, reflected in higher heart rate and blood pressure during climax. Beyond subjective pleasure, orgasm and sexual activity correlate with several health-relevant outcomes. Published research links regular sexual activity with improved sleep, short-term mood elevation, and transient pain relief. Pelvic floor engagement during orgasm can strengthen pelvic musculature, lowering risk of mild urinary incontinence. There's also evidence that intimate sexual contact reduces perceived stress and increases emotional bonding via oxytocin. Epidemiological studies report that a substantial proportion of women do not orgasm consistently from intercourse alone. Estimates vary by sample and method but many surveys show significant rates of anorgasmia or inconsistent orgasm. There are persistent myths. Let's debunk a few using science. Myth 1. The vagina is the only place that matters for female orgasm. 
Fact. The clitoris and its internal structures are primary sensory organs. The vagina can also contribute via different nerve pathways. Sexual response evolves with age and life events. Adolescence, pregnancy, postpartum, perimenopause, and menopause are all phases with distinct hormonal milieus and potential. Sexual function changes. Practical steps often help more than myths. Health education plus communication are the simplest, most effective tools. If sexual difficulties cause distress, clinical options exist. A clinician will take a history, review medications, check for hormonal imbalances, assess pelvic health, and sometimes refer for psychotherapy or pelvic therapy. Current research uses fMRI, ultrasound, and EMG to map orgasmic processes. There are still gaps. Historically, sex research focused more on male physiology, and there are methodological challenges studying orgasm in the scanner environment. Emerging work explores neuroendocrine cascades, pelvic floor neuromodulation, and the role of microbiome and inflammation in sexual health. As technology advances, we expect more precise mapping and personalized treatments. Scientific discussion of human sexuality must be grounded in ethics, informed consent, respect for privacy, and sensitivity to cultural perspectives. In clinical care, prioritize patient autonomy, non-judgmental listening, and evidence-based guidance. If you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, and consider sharing it with someone who would benefit from medically accurate sexual health education. For sources, further reading, and clinician-recommended resources, check the description below. If you have questions for future videos on pelvic floor health, sexual function across the lifespan, or sex therapy, Drop them in the comments. Thanks for watching. But before we close, let's take a deeper look at what this really means. The female orgasm isn't just a physical reaction. It's a story told by the body, the brain, and evolution itself. It's proof that pleasure and biology are interconnected and that the human body is designed for both survival and connection. Every heartbeat, every wave of sensation, every neural pulse is a reminder that we are living, feeling, and deeply intelligent beings. For generations, science avoided this topic, not because it wasn't important, but because society wasn't ready to listen. Yet silence only leads to misunderstanding. When we talk openly about sexual wellness, we promote respect, confidence, and equality as not. Controversy.education empowers people to recognize that pleasure is part of health and that knowing your body is a right, not a taboo. Medical researchers continue to Uncover the profound ways in which orgasm impacts the body. It enhances cardiovascular health, improves hormone balance, reduces pain, and even strengthens mental resilience. These are not myths. They are measurable. Biological benefits proven by modern science. Understanding the female orgasm isn't just about anatomy. It's about empathy. It's about listening to the body's signals. Valuing communication in relationships and realizing that true wellness is physical, emotional, and psychological combined. It's about giving women's health the same scientific attention and respect that every human system deserves. If this video sparked curiosity or helped, you view health differently. Take a moment to share. It, your one share or comment might encourage someone else to learn something new about themselves. And that ripple effect creates awareness that lasts far beyond one video as you leave today. Remember this, sexual health is not about perfection. It's about understanding. It's about embracing the complexity of the body with compassion and curiosity. Knowledge is the bridge between fear and freedom. And every fact we uncover brings us closer to a world built on respect and truth. So continue to learn, continue to ask questions, and continue to treat your body and others with the respect it deserves. Together, through science and education, we can remove stigma, spread awareness, and inspire confidence in every person who seeks to understand the miracle of the human body. Thank you for being part of this journey. Stay curious, stay kind.